Hi, this is Sahana. In this Entity Framework Core Series, today we are going to discuss one-to-one -one relationship. What is one-to-one -one relationship? In the context of Entity Framework Core, if one entity is associated with at most one other entity, we call it as one-to-one -one relationship. If we talk about relational database, if each row in one table has only one related row in another table, we call it as one-to-one -one relationship. If you look at this application, we have employee class and manager class. As of now, there is no relationship between these two classes. We have used these two classes as DB set properties. So Entity Framework Core has created tables representing these two classes. If we take same example, employee and manager, in most of the common scenarios, employee can have only one manager, but manager may be associated with many employees. This cannot be one-to-one -one relationship. This is one-to-many relationship. One example for one-to-one -one relationship would be employee and employee details table. In employee table, I want to store only employee ID and employee name. I want to keep rest of the details in a separate table that is employee details table. Before discussing how to set up this one-to-one -one relationship, I'll show you the actual database which is holding all these tables. Let's open SQL Server Object Explorer. Open this MS SQL local DB, expand databases. We are working with this database, employee management underscore EF core practice. You can verify this with connection string. Here we have initial catalog and the name and the value is employee management underscore EF core practice. This is our database. This database has two tables, employees and managers. We don't have employee details table yet. And one more important thing is we have followed cold first approach. So we, we have created these tables using migrations. Talking about how to set up one-to-one -one relationship. In SQL Server, one-to-one -one relationship can be created using primary key and unique foreign key constraints. In case of Entity Framework Core, we give special names to the entities that are involved in relationship. They are principal entity, which is a parent entity, and a dependent entity, which is a child entity. On a principal entity, we set primary key, and on a dependent entity, we set foreign key. And we also have a special property. We call it as reference navigation property. In our case, this employee class is a principal entity. We need to create one more class that is employee details and that will become our dependent entity. I will add one more class by name employee details. Right click on models folder, add class. I will name it as employee details and I will add these properties ID, address, phone number and email. In employee table, this employee ID is a primary key. Talking about primary keys, by default, Entity Framework Core will assume that a property named ID or class name along with ID, in our case it is employee ID, is the primary key of an entity. Second thing is, you can also use data annotations to explicitly specify the primary key property using the key attribute. I'll show you how to do it. And one more thing is, you can also configure the primary key using the Fluent API in the on model creating method of your DB context class. The entity framework core has considered this attribute as primary key as its name is employee, I, employee plus ID. Your employee is a class name and we have ID, so it is employee ID. And by convention, entity framework core has considered this as primary key. If you want to have some other name, or else even for this attribute, you can explicitly specify using key attribute. See, as soon as we have added this attribute, uh, so, uh, Visual Studio has added this namespace. This is inside system.componentModel.DataAnnotations. This is one more approach. Now I will open employee details class. We already have these many properties. Now I will add one more property that will become our foreign key. Next, by using this reference navigation property, I will tell Entity Framework Core that this employee ID belongs to this employee class and this is a foreign key. I have opened this employee class. Even here, I will add this reference navigation property to dependent entity that is employee details. Here we are getting error. Employee details is less accessible than property employee details. This is because here because I'm um, here access modifier is public. If we go to employee details by default, it's access modifier is internal. I will make this as public. Let's save this and go back here. Again, I'll save this one. 
now there is no error by using primary key foreign key and reference navigation properties we have set up this one-to-one -one relationship it's not yet done now we should apply same changes to the database as well before that i'll include employee details in app db context class now we are going to add migration to do that open package manager console add migration i will name it as one to one relationship enter now i'll execute update database command hit enter this update database command has made use of this migration one to one relationship here here first what you see is a timestamp let's verify the same at database side here you can see that employee details table has been created it has primary key and also it has foreign key here employee id is a foreign key so successfully we have set up one to one relationship this is all about one to one relationship i hope the session was useful see you soon in the next video thank you